I am talking to uh, Katie Arroyo, who is a teacher at Norview High School, one of my kids' teachers. Uh, she's also the director of the LCSC program. And Katie, what does that stand for? Leadership Center for Sciences and Engineering. That's great. And I just, I wanted to check in with you, a Norfolk Public Schools teacher, uh, to, to see how you're feeling, uh, to get some input from you on what we could do as parents um, and as citizens here in Norfolk to support uh, the teachers and the schools and the students. Um, so how are you doing at home right now? Okay, so um, being at home is not the best when you love your job. And I would say that the majority of teachers in Norfolk absolutely love their job. They love their kids. Um, probably thinking about this interview last night, I started dreaming about school and I was on the steps and I saw almost all my seniors and I greeted them all by name and then I woke up and realized, oh, I haven't seen them in so long. So I think most teachers are really feeling that right now, that they miss their kids. We wonder how they're doing. We do interact with them, you know, online as much as we can. And then we call home. And so parents might wonder why we're, um, you know, trying to get in touch with their kids so much, but we love them. We're used to spending so much time with them. I can't even imagine elementary school teachers having, you know, 25, 30 kids that they see all day, every day, and now nothing. So, you know, we're trying to be creative. We're trying to not bore the kids by engaging them in online. It's just different because we, we especially at Norview High School, we do a lot of Socratic seminars. We do a lot of discussion. We love just having question and answer sessions. And now we're so limited, of course, but we just really love the kids to be real. So being home is weird like everybody else, but we have this kind of hole in our heart kind of thing. So I think uh, all of uh, your parents, myself included, have a, a, an even better appreciation than we ever did of what an important role teachers have and how hard your job is. I am not a good homeschool teacher. I'll just tell you, I'll admit to you flat out. Um, do you have any tips for the parents who are at home on how we can help our kids get through this time? Um, absolutely. So um, I agree with you. I'm not a great homeschool teacher either. Uh, I have a senior. Thank God she is so self-motivated. But um, absolutely, kids need structure. So it's really important that you know your kids, which you do. So some kids need to sleep later in the morning and then have their school in the afternoon. Some kids need to get up and get it done. Um, I think letting your kids know that Monday through Friday, we are going to do school. We are going to sit in this specific location. So I had one kid who was just struggling. He's calling me saying, I'm doing 10 to 14 hours a day of work. What do I do? And I'm like, okay, let's set up a schedule. So he and I sat down over Zoom and we worked it out. And he realized that working in his room was not working for him. So we talked to his parents, we got him working at the dining room table. This is what I'm saying. So figure out where are your kids most productive? Where are your kids most engaged? Where are they least distracted? Mm -hmm. um, there's also a method you can look up called the Pomodoro method where they work for a certain amount of time, then they take a certain amount of break time and then they work for a certain amount of time. And our kids, a lot of kids find that very cool because they know they get to look at their phone or they get to play a game or they get to go for a walk, whatever it is to keep it like, it's kind of routine, but there's also rewards there. Um, it keeps the parents' sanity. It keeps the kids productive. And so that's my, that's my thought. That's great. We're doing a lot of um, outside of the packets in the Google Classroom, encouraging the boys to learn um, new skills, new hobbies, to expand on things. Um, so it's, you know, everybody's got a little different method for sure. Um, and how are you handling the situation where, you know, we're talking via Zoom because we both have internet capability and we have devices to do this. Um, how are y'all addressing the issue for the kids who may not have access to that? So at this point at Norview, um, every teacher at Norview is calling every single home and asking who needs internet access because we're trying to get hotspots in the kids' homes. Um, who needs uh, either a computer, a Chromebook. Sometimes we're finding that Kids are sharing with five other siblings. Well, we need to get them some access. So at Norview, that's what we're working on. I know Dr. Birdsong has been putting money into getting new resources. Um, so we'll see how we can roll that out. But, you know, that's where I think it's important for teachers to be calling home and for parents to be reaching out any way that they can. Most people can at least email 
on their phones. And if they email their teachers and say, hey, you know, we don't have this kind of access, what could you do? I, for one, love calling kids and just saying, let's talk about what you've been doing. Let's, you know, that is actually really fun for me. So if, if parents want to reach out and ask the teacher, hey, could you call my kid? Can you discuss math with them for a few minutes? Teachers are very willing to do that. That's great. Yeah, I, I saw that uh, teachers from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. are available every day, Monday through Friday. So we'd encourage parents to definitely take advantage of that opportunity. Yes, so that yes. Would be so, absolutely. Between 10 and 2, we are sitting there staring at our computers. Well, all of us are working, actually, but I'm just saying we're absolutely ready to address any concerns that you have via email. And then, like I said, if you ask for a call, we'll give you a call. And just to confirm, because I had this argument with my ninth grader, um, these packets now, and this, they are required. You do have to turn them in. You do have to work because there will be, they will be included in some sort of grading mechanism for the fourth quarter. Could you just clarify that for sake of the argument in my own household? <laughs> we would like students to complete all of their work. Um, I need Dr. Birdsong to weigh in on that. I am not, I do not have the clout <laughs> to say what in what way it will be graded but it will be looked at and assessed by the teachers yes so we need to keep everybody working and not uh just yeah. watching youtube and playing video games this is for <laughs> yes. my own edification here just so you absolutely see. we want the students to be engaged in the learning process we would love for them to be on khan academy j labs doing what they need to do as though they were taking the sols this year um, because we want them to be completely ready for next year. Regardless of grades, kids need to be engaged in the learning process. So I have one last question for you, which is, um, what sort of positive outcome do you see from this experience, which is completely unique and not expected? Okay, so that's a great question. And actually, I gave um, my ninth graders a choice of three things they could do for Wednesday's assignment. The three choices were, one, you can write a quick note to the school board, giving them recommendations on what you would do if you were in charge. Mm -hmm. um, number two, they could tell me what's something positive that came out of this that you didn't anticipate. Or number three, they could draw me a picture, show me how their experience has been, and write an artist statement. So I've gotten the coolest assignments from that, and the ones about positivity are amazing. They're telling me, um, man, I didn't think I would like this, but I'm building a relationship with my mom. I was like, whoa, that's awesome. Another one was I discovered that I have a lot more talents than I realized I had, and now I'm trying this, and now I'm crocheting, and now I'm doing, you know, those are cool things that kids, especially kids who've been challenging themselves with really hard classes, have not had a lot of free time, so to speak. And so this is something that's really kind of engaging for them because they get to do things besides just homework and studying and reading. So that's been cool. Other uh, kids have said, you know, I've taken this time to reconnect with old friends or people who I know are struggling. I'm reaching out to them. And so hopefully online, online, not in person. Online, so. completely, <laughs> completely. And I'll just say this too. A lot of kids are discovering snail mail, which is oh, so cool man. because they're all writing letters. I know my own daughters have sent 15 letters in the last week and wow. their friends, you know, their friends are five minutes away, but we can't see them. So I think this is a good time to just rediscover our humanity, honestly. Wow. Well, that's a great, that's a great way to end things. Um, and, you know, on behalf of my family, um, and I think all of the families throughout Norfolk and beyond, uh, we just have this heartfelt gratitude and thanks to all of our teachers and administration for the hard work that you have always put in. Um, and now you're, you're helping us get through this tough time. So um, Katie Arroyo, Thank you so much for being here. Stay well and um, look forward to seeing you in person sometime in the future. Sounds great. All right. Stay well. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.